Yes, hi, I'm looking for uh, Terry Blackwood. This is Terry. Hey, Mr. Blackwood, how are you today, sir? Good. This is Joe Crine. Uh, I set up to do an interview with you. Oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. Joe. You got time, or you want me to call you back another day? No, this is fine. Okay. Uh, can you tell me a little about yourself, your family, where you grew up? Uh, well, I grew up um, uh, in the Blackwood uh, Brothers family, which is uh, a gospel gospel group out of Na uh, out of Memphis. Mm -hmm. Actually, they they were born in Mississippi, moved to Shenandoah, and wound up in Memphis. That's where I grew up. Was in Memphis, and that's where I first met Elvis. And, mm -hmm. Uh, Elvis was a fan of my family's group when he was, before he was famous, and, uh, so, and actually we went to the same church, Elvis, as a, as a young, uh, I guess you would say late teens, he was, he was still going to our church, and, uh, and, uh, just, just kind of got acquainted that way, but never, never really thought I'd ever sing with him until I joined the Imperials. Mm -hmm. So when did you join the Imperials? In 1967. Mm -hmm. And two years, we we did our own thing, and we we got a uh, kind of an arrangement with Jimmy Dean, the country singer. We sang with him on a lot of things before. Uh, the invitation to work with Elvis came along in 1969, mm -hmm. and that's when we went with Elvis, and we were there for three years, uh, opened in Las Vegas with him on July 31st, 1969, at the International Hotel. Mm -hmm. Were you an Elvis fan? Um, I would say that I probably wasn't until I worked with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I became an Elvis fan because I, I mean, I, if, if you're from Memphis, especially, you, you knew all about him. Of course, he was, uh, he had some, some hits right away on the, and, uh, was becoming, uh, r really famous and, uh, although I, 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 I can't say that I was a, a big rock and roll fan, mm -hmm. uh, I liked a lot of the rock music of the 50s and 60s, uh, and Elvis was one of them. And uh, I think just to to meet him was a was a real treat, and uh, and uh, and to work with him it was it was a a real real memorable experience. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me any funny stories with working with Elvis at the International, or anything that sticks in your mind, or? I would say nothing in particular um, that I could say. He he was just a cut up, and he was uh, he was uh, just unpredictable. Um, when it, he would uh, he would of course carry bottled water around, and he he or just drink water. He would be throwing water on guys and. Just falling off of the stool and just uh, doing a lot of silly things and saying the saying the wrong words uh, uh, in the songs and laughing at himself. And do you think just, just to, to break up the? Up. Yeah, do you think? Do you think he was doing that just to break up the monotony of doing it every day, or just to? No, I think it was him. He just was a free spirit. Just a free spirit, and just uh, uh, very unusual man. Not very predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was a lot of his mystique. Because really, in high school uh, back then, if you had long hair and it was kind of greasy, you were not really very on the. You were in on the in crowd. You were kind of a fringe. I don't think he would have been considered um, really hip uh, or really cool with the uh, high school students, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I understand. I didn't. I didn't see it, but I understand what he's saying uh, for the high school assembly or whatever. That uh, I think it changed a lot of the perception about him. But he never really was accepted among the in crowd in high school. He was kind of an outsider, but. It uh, didn't seem to bother him because he, he'd wear his collar up and his hair long, you know, and mm -hmm. just do things that weren't very typical of that age. Most most guys back then had short hair. Uh -huh. And uh, he was just, he was 
doing his own thing back then. He was an individual, and he didn't uh, he didn't uh, march to any <laughs> yeah anyone's uh, tune. He did his own thing. Yeah, and look what it did for him. <laughs> well, uh, I think so, and I think uh, he's probably the most emulated uh, singer of all time. Uh, uh, sometimes I regret that because I think some of these guys uh, really uh, don't need to try to dress like him and look like him. I mm -hmm. think that's kind of a shame that they lost their identity trying to look like Elvis. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, to each his own, whatever whatever they feel like they've got to do. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he was an individual, and, you know, Mm -hmm. No one, uh, no one has been emulated more and tried and copied more than him because, I mean, because he was so different. Mm -hmm. And uh, he stood out in the crowd, and uh, you know, you have your, you know, you have your Frank Sinatra, who was truly a great singer, but you, you don't ever hear any Frank Sinatra wannabes or any <laughs> Frank Sinatra of, of lookalikes anymore. I don't. Right. So, I mean, there was something about him that was just very special. Mm -hmm. Before his show, did uh, did you just do anything special before his show? You hear some people say that they held hands and they prayed or he they sing a gospel song or something. Was that done, or do you remember anything? Uh, uh, yeah, all of that was done from time to time. But, we, you know, we, we each had our own dressing room. We always had his. And then, but then a lot of times we would... We would uh, get in his dressing room uh, before the show and we might sing a little bit uh, just to get him warmed up or just mm -hmm. get him calmed down a little bit. And a lot of times we'd just go up the elevator together to the to, mm -hmm. to the showroom floor and, uh, and walk across the back of the stage and uh, just make small talk or just kind of to calm him down. And, and, uh, but all of that, all of that was done. I mean, uh, he was very comfortable uh, praying and very comfortable talking about the Bible. And uh, uh, his mother was a very devout Christian, and he, uh, he emulated, he loved his mother probably more than any woman in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think because he respected her and he uh, knew that she loved him regardless of what, of how famous he got, whether she loved him back when he wasn't famous. Yeah. So I think that had a certain uh, uh, charm to him that he he never could get away from. Mm -hmm. Because it, once he's famous, uh, you know, he never never was sure why, whether that that girl liked him for him or for what he had achieved. I bet that has to be hard. It, it was. It was really a difficult place for him to be. Mm -hmm. I, I felt for him, but uh, he never dreamed that this would happen to him. I mean, he just made a record for his mother, and all of a sudden he's, uh, you know, and he's famous. And, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it really wasn't. So many, so many people nowadays work to be famous, and they scheme, and they strive for to be famous. And I don't I don't know that that was Elvis's goal. I think Elvis just loved to sing, and uh, when the music came on, he just couldn't be still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I don't think he really thought this would ever happen to him. Yeah. After this show, would you go up and uh, would you go party with Elvis, or would we would go to the penthouse? Uh, we're not partiers, but we would go up there, and he'd have finger food. He'd have. Um, Whatever you wanted to drink, uh, uh, most of us, at least our group, we, we're not drinkers. We mm -hmm. drink water or Sprite or Coke or something like that. But we sit around the piano and and uh, one of us would play and we'd all sing. We'd usually wind up singing, singing. Uh, we well, that's all we sang was gospel songs because. He, he had every record that my family ever made mm -hmm. and the Statesman Quartet and all these groups. He knew everybody's name. He knew their song. And he also liked black gospel. Uh -huh. He liked uh, Harmonizing Four and uh, all those groups. He had all of their records. And uh, a lot of times we'd listen to records and then we'd, we'd sing. Mm -hmm. and he liked, he loved to harmonize. He loved having a tenor and a baritone and a bass. And mm -hmm. He he could sing along with us and and just uh, I think that brought him great pleasure. Mm -hmm. We certainly didn't go up there and sing his rock and roll music. I think I think he knew that that brought him there, and 
yet. I don't think, I think when it just came down to singing with us, he'd rather sing gospel. Uh -huh. It's too bad you didn't try a, a gospel concert. Do you think it would have, you think it would have worked? I don't think the Colonel would have allowed it. No. I think, I think he wanted to do it many times, but I don't think Colonel Parker would have allowed it. He, he, uh, he really was, um, kind of a hard taskmaster and he, uh, he, I think Elvis, I'm, I have heard that Elvis wanted to do it and, and the Colonel said no. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? Elvis was a very loyal guy. He didn't want to buck him. Yeah. He didn't want to go against him because he really, deep down, he really thought that the Colonel made him famous, but really, Elvis brought the Colonel along as far as I'm yeah. concerned. It was his talent that made him famous. Yeah, I, I think the Colonel was made some smart moves about limiting his appearances and doing some things, I think, that really helped enhance Elvis' career, but I think the raw talent that Elvis possessed would have come through anyway, and, mm -hmm. and I, don't, I think I know any other smart manager could have done the same thing with Elvis. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, remember any security problems or anything? They, they say how people said that they were going to kill him and stuff. Did other yeah, there was there was one there there were a lot of jealous boyfriends in the audiences that uh, hated Elvis because their girlfriend loved Elvis, and uh, hmm. so he carried around uh, with him probably five or six really tough guys. Mm -hmm. um, Bodyguards, uh, Red Red uh, West and Sunny West, and a lot of guys who um, who would pretty much go wherever Elvis went, and they would kind of run interference. And I and I remember times when uh, when girls would actually jump up onto the stage, and they'd have to they'd have to get under stand in their seat, and then get on the table, and then get jump up on the stage. And it, there have been times when I've seen them do that and run towards Elvis, and before they could get to uh, there were times when they did get to him and they just wanted to kiss him, but there were other times when um, they were tackled before they got to him. Mm -hmm. The guys in the wings who would, who you never knew what somebody had in mind when they were running toward him. And right. so they would, they would run interference and... Uh, keep people from, keep these women from getting to him. Never had a man do that, uh, except there was a, there was one time when a guy was so angry with him that, uh, that he said he was going to shoot him on stage. Hmm. And, uh, there is, there was a song in the show called, um, uh, you, you never go, love and, love and feeling, I think, where he mm -hmm. got his back to the audience and the spotlight is right on his back. And the, the the message came back to him that when when he turned his back and the spotlight was on him, he was going to get shot. Mm -hmm. And so that night there was a lot of security in the audience, and uh, uh, his his bodyguards were well, bodyguards were walking through the audience trying to see if they could find a man with a gun. Mm. <laughs> I must have tore Elvis up. Serialized. I must have tore Elvis up to think that somebody would want to do that. Well, you know, there's a lot of crazy people in the world, and they they are insanely. They, some of these guys were insanely jealous. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't like the fact that their girlfriend was just oogling, <laughs> oogling over over Elvis and yeah. uh, making over Elvis, and yeah. you know uh, they didn't like that, and they they it, it attacked their manhood or whatever. So yeah. they felt like they had it's to ridiculous. Be uh, be that way to. Uh, you know, to be manly, but uh, mm -hmm. Elvis, Elvis was inno innocent in that regard. You know, all he was doing was going up there singing his songs. He didn't right. have any designs on, on those women. He just, you know, uh, he can't, <laughs> yeah. I think he thought it was funny. In fact, he laughed about it a lot, about how these women were acting. Mm -hmm. So, but he just, I think he, after a while, he started just playing with it and letting letting it happen just because he he enjoyed the uh you know sure happening but he didn't he didn't uh he just he just was himself he, was, he wasn't trying to yeah. turn anybody on he was just doing what he did do you remember where that death threat uh, took place at was that at the uh, international yeah that was at the international okay you know, hey you know i wouldn't about 
oh, two years into our, mm -hmm. uh, our stay with it. You know, I was always told that everybody paid for their ticket. Now, if your family went to go see the Elvis concert and to see you, did you have to pay for your ticket? Uh, my family never went to see me with Elvis. Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm sure that there were some who could get comped if they were uh, part of the show. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, my family uh, were um, in Memphis, and they really... Um, they didn't like the idea that I was even singing in Las Vegas. Really? So uh, they they really, although they understood, I don't think my father ever even, I don't think my father or mother ever even went to Las Vegas. If they did, it was not, not to gamble. Mm -hmm. And uh, gambling was just, uh, we, we were um, church-going people. We, we, we really um, had no interest in gambling. Mm -hmm. It didn't interest us. I mean, you don't build those huge hotels by giving away more money than you take in. Right. And so, I mean, I think I think people who who can't control their gambling are very sad because it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they and they they don't ever tell anybody. But I mean, what's what's sad is when they gamble away food money and they gamble away rent money, right. hoping to make to make it rich. And so. I learned that I learned very quickly that that's not how I'm going to make any money. And besides, I don't really, I don't think it's scriptural. I don't think you're going to ever get anything for nothing. I think you you um, you have to work and you have to uh, achieve, and then you're rewarded. But you don't get anything for nothing. Life is just not that way. I've seen too many too many of these um, lottery winners who had nothing much when they won. And after two years, they still wound up with nothing. Yeah, you're right. They gave it away, or they found all these relatives that they didn't know they had. <laughs> you don't know how right you... Investment. You are very right, very because I know of a person that... that I know a person that did get the uh, lottery winner, who was a lottery winner, and he said to me it was the worst thing that ever happened to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't handle it. And it, that, that's the sad thing is they, they think that will change, or that that will just be, be the ultimate thing, but then... The truth of the matter is, you have within you the ability to make money and to uh, survive, and you don't come, you don't get to that, you don't get that by winning money. You get that by, you know, uh, working, using your brain, and, mm -hmm. and figuring out ways to to keep income coming, and and to hope that you're going to get a three hundred million dollar gift for just being the lucky one mm -hmm. I mean it, it, it's just it's just it's just ridiculous it's mm -hmm. just silly and it's sad because people who are smart don't play the lottery yeah I don't play the lottery <laughs> I, I, I don't I, 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 and I know some people play for fun uh -huh. okay you know if you play for fun but if you think you're going to actually think you're going to win you just really aren't in the real world <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty bad if you don't have the money to play the lottery. I mean, I've seen people use their last couple of dollars. I saw, I, 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 I hate to say it, I saw this poor little woman go, I mean, she was, went into the, I, I, where I was getting some gas, and she uh, she put this little wrinkled $5 bill down, and she got her lottery tickets and walked out. I guess she got five tickets or something. Mm -hmm. oh, this is so sad. I mean, she needed to have that money. She should use that money to buy food, and she's putting it in on the lottery. But mm -hmm. I think it feeds on a lot of the greed in people. It makes them think the wrong things, that this is going to be their big chance. Mm -hmm. the, the odds of winning <laughs> are, are, are worse than you being struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's, I just, it's just sad, but that's, uh, uh, that's not very popular thinking to the to the masses, but that's okay. yeah. Hey, did you ever uh, visit Elvis at home? I mean, yes, I did. Uh huh. We were there. He invited us over um, for one Christmas. I believe it would have been 1970. We went to Graceland and oh, just hung out. We went 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 out to eat, and we just hung out at his place. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of Graceland? Wives and yeah, what you think? 
Oh, I thought it was pretty gaudy. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, but but uh, it's Elvis. You yeah. Know? I mean, no, he's you... a country boy from Mississippi, and when he got he got money, he just, you know, there's a lot of naugahyde, a lot of plastic. and uh -huh. had, But it but it had a jungle room, and he had the, <laughs> downstairs he had the three TVs so he could watch every channel. Yeah. And, uh, but it was, um, it was Elvis. I mean, it was just very appropriate. I mean, for him to have a designer come in and do, <laughs> do his home would be unthinkable for Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to do it the way he wants to do it. Yeah. Do you have any funny stories with the Memphis Mafia? I mean, did you get along with all of them or? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to mess with the Memphis Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, they were always nice to us because they knew we, we we meant no harm. We were up there to help him. And yeah. So, uh, you know, they were, we we just basically just small talk. But yeah. We would cut up, you know, and we'd have some good good times with them. It was um, it was a fun. Uh, there weren't any there weren't any any people that I thought were difficult. Um, you know, even the colonel. Well, probably for the record, I, I can just tell you, uh, never in my life did I speak to the colonel. Really? Uh, the colonel had a had a an assistant named Tom Diskin. Mm -hmm. If you had a question about something, and you uh, and you wanted to to know something, you didn't ask the colonel. You asked Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom. Uh, uh, was kind of the go-between, and the, he was a really nice fellow. Mm -hmm. The colonel um, had a way about him making you feel very small and very un insignificant. Mm -hmm. So you didn't talk to the colonel. He um, he kind of did his own thing, and he didn't he didn't have anything to do with you. Hmm. It's too bad to go through life like that. I think he was had to be a very lonely man because uh, uh, Elvis was was totally opposite to that and. You know, you, you could approach Elvis any time. Mm -hmm. But the colonel, I don't think the colonel was very well liked by by many people because because of that. I think, mm -hmm. he, I think he had a very small circle of friends. Do you think anybody else could have managed Elvis and did ju just as well? Yep, I sure do. Do you? Huh. I sure do. I mean, it would have taken a special guy. It would have taken a guy who understood Elvis. I think the colonel did understand him, but uh, a good manager, any good manager could have managed Elvis. Mm -hmm. uh, management is all about what the colonel did, and, and the colonel did a lot of the right things, but he also did some wrong things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he could, have, he could have improved Elvis's image by not by taking it uh, from what I considered more of a circus uh, type of atmosphere in right. the lobby of the hotel and, and, and classed it up a little bit. It didn't have to be so cheap looking. Mm -hmm. It could have been classier. It, could, it didn't have to be Gucci. It <laughs> could have been something more appropriate for Elvis, I think, uh -huh. rather than, than plastic straw hats and, you know, Banners that were cheap. Yeah. I just, that's just my opinion. Right. I don't have any. Do you know if Elvis ever complained about it or no? No. 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 Elvis didn't complain about it. He, yeah. Elvis wasn't a complainer. He just went along. He yeah. Just, he just, um, you know, he made he made more money than he ever dreamed he could make in his life, and he mm -hmm. wasn't into image necessarily. He was into just singing. Yeah. And uh, that's what kind of what a manager does is. Or should do is is image and uh, work on all of those things. And uh, Elvis just wanted to make music. He just wanted to sing and mm -hmm. he wanted to make people happy and smile. And and that's what he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Is he, and, and, you know, and the people who came, um, they, they you know, they loved it. They they didn't really think anything about it. And uh, at the time, I didn't either. But I I think. And he would have never been the Franks. He would have never appealed to the Frank Sinatra type people anyway. But he mm -hmm. could have. I mean, he 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 really uh, had a. He 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 was just. Uh, there was been no one like him, and I think a lot of it is uh, really due to Elvis.
he's just so charismatic and, mm -hmm. and powerful on, on the stage that uh, mm -hmm. he could have pulled it off with just about anybody. Mm -hmm. Any manager could have made it. Any manager that was smart could have made Elvis. Yeah. Could have helped him. And, and, and I'm not saying the colonel didn't, because the colonel did help him. Right. Is there a show? Limiting his performances was a was a was a really important thing, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the Ed Sullivan thing was great. It, a lot of right decisions were made. Yeah. So you have to say the Colonel uh, was valuable in a lot of ways. Uh, sure, especially when he was in the service. Yeah. You know, slowly letting out uh, songs and. Yeah. And then was keeping Elvis in the eye of the people when he was in the service. So, hey, was oh, there... Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, all of those things. And and I think, uh, I, I think he, you know, so, I mean, to his credit, uh, I, I, I really don't know how much you could credit uh, the Colonel with Elvis' success or how much of it was just Elvis himself, but I, I don't think the Colonel really hurt, he, hurt him in, mm -hmm. in his success. I think he probably helped him, but uh, long range, I think Elvis's image probably could have could have could have maybe been a little better with with a manager who maybe uh, did, did did things a little differently. But but uh, who who can say? Who mm -hmm. can say? I mean, it it was just such a, a short short time. A short two, his life was too short, but. By the time he was done, um, he was so sick mm -hmm. and um, unable to really um, be himself anymore that it was uh, it was just uh, it was really sad. Mm -hmm. When did you when did the Imperial stop uh, the with the Elvis gig? Uh, Nineteen seventy-two. We mm -hmm. left. And why? We were getting well because. You, to work with Elvis, you might have to, um, they'd call you three weeks before a, a concert and say, well, we just booked such and such, Can uh, we need you to come. And uh, we were, as a group, we were quite successful in, in our gospel field. And in our field, you worked with contracts. And mm -hmm. you, you agreed to show up at a certain place and uh, you can't really get, you really can't go against your word. And if, if the colonel called and said, we want you to be in such and such a place, we would, have, we had to cancel, we would have had to cancel. So we were finding it difficult to um, reconcile all of that uh, with the realities of scheduling. Mm -hmm. uh, because we scheduled six months to a year ahead and and sometimes the colonel would book something that would come in at the last minute and want us to be there. Mm -hmm. So you ha we had to decide, do we just want to give up everything and just hang around until the colonel calls? And we decided that, that, it, that there, were, there were long periods in between sometimes where, where nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so we just decided, plus the fact we were working with Jimmy Dean, and and he was working Vegas too. And with Jimmy, we were we were we were getting three songs in the show, and mm -hmm. we're making a lot of friends. And mm -hmm. plus, we had just won Group of the Year in the gospel field, and so we were getting a lot of calls from mm -hmm. the gospel industry also. So mm -hmm. too many too many uh, irons in the fire, and. Ultimately, uh, looking back on it, we should have stayed with Elvis and dropped Jimmy Dean, and we should have just stayed with him because... You think he could have helped him? Choice, you, you, think, you never know. You think he could have helped him? I mean, uh, did you see him after you left and, and just no, said to yourself... I didn't see him. I didn't see him. Uh, I saw, he would come over to where we were singing with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes he'd slip in the back and see the show. That was after the Stamps joined him. And, uh, but even then... He looked okay, uh, and then there was a period of about four years, uh, from about '73 or '74 on to when he died, that we didn't see him. And then when I saw him on that uh, Aloha, I was really shocked. Mm -hmm. I was completely shocked that he had how he had changed and had gotten so 
heavy and um, just really, it was just amazing the change in him. Mm-hmm. Was there a scuttlebutt going around town that Elvis was sick? Um, just curious. I mean, not to us. Yeah. Uh, 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 I think we would just hear that he was, you know, that. I don't think anybody, I mean, because I had never done drugs, I didn't really, I didn't know, I, I, I think, I think he was, he started out taking pills to go to sleep and then pills to get up, and mm-hmm. I think that was a lot of it, I don't think there was any pain involved, except there might have been at the end, I don't know, but, mm-hmm. uh, what a shame, yeah, so, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know that, I know that Dr. Nick was, uh, over-prescribing, medicine, give him whatever he wanted, and and that was wrong, uh, but, um, you know, it's hard to tell others no, and I'm sure that the doctor was doing just, uh, doing whatever Ellis wanted to keep mm-hmm. him happy. Uh, how, and when did you uh, hear, and how did you hear that Elvis had passed away? I came on the radio, I was, uh, I was in Memphis, leaving town, uh, I think we were doing a date somewhere, and I'd heard I'd, it came on on the radio. Mm-hmm. So, how did it make you feel? Uh, just shocked. Yeah. Just really shocked. Not surprised, or? Huh? Not surprised. Oh yes, I was surprised. I mean, yeah. you never you never expect a man forty two years old to die. Yeah. Yeah, I never realized how young forty two was until I became forty two. Yeah, well, he, you know, his mother was 42 when she died, and he said, he said, I'll probably die. With, I'll, he said, I won't live long either. He, he, he really had kind of predicted that. Mm-hmm. I, I, he said, I probably won't. He said, I'll probably die. So he had said that? Yeah, he had said that. Yeah, I had others say that, too, that he had said that. And uh... Yeah, he, he, uh, he didn't think he'd live long. And <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that he knew he was sick, uh, that he was... That, you know, you can tell when your body's not right. Sure. I think he knew his body was was rejecting a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff he was putting in it. What do you think of his everlasting popularity? Uh, I think it's amazing. <laughs> I don't think there'll ever be anybody um, do that again. I don't. I don't think even the Beatles. The Beatles were a group, and they're still loved. But uh, you know, the personality of Elvis and the charisma. Uh, well, I don't think we'll ever be matched by anybody mm-hmm. uh, ever again. I, I don't know how long it'll last. As, you know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of kids coming up who uh, we just sang with a little kid the other night who who uh, he's about five. No, he would be about seven. Had on a little jumpsuit <laughs> and uh, singing Elvis. He, yeah. you know, he was way off pitch and everything, but he. But uh, he loved Elvis, and yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know um, the next generation will be as enamored with him as all the previous ones have. Yeah. So what are you doing now? Um, singing with the Imperials. Uh, we, we're doing a lot of Elvis fan club concerts. We'll be at Graceland for the big 30th anniversary. Mm-hmm. We did the 20th and 25th, and going to... Uh, we we we, we are going to um, Europe, uh, going to Italy in two weeks. We're going to Germany in a month. And mm. All of these are Elvis related events. These yeah. are, these are backing up Elvis uh, tribute artists or uh, or doing gospel concerts. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it, it's it's pretty much all Elvis Elvis fans who uh, remember us from working with Elvis. And, mm-hmm. uh, they can't get enough of it. They just they fly us over and take good care of us, and and of course we work with the Sweet Inspirations every once in a while, and, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, just just various events. Uh, uh, yeah, and I want to I want to get people to uh, check out your website. What's your website? It's the Imperial www.theimperials.us. Dot US. Not dot com. That's a the Imperials dot com is a young group that. Uh, does a completely different style of music than we do, and um, they have kind of uh, cap cap cap. What's the word? Capitalized. Uh, capitalized on on this. 
strength of, of what we've accomplished. And, mm. and yet, uh, because we really don't compete in the same uh, venues, uh, we we believe in living and let live. Yeah. Leave and just uh, let them do their thing and we do mm. our thing. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, my God, it's got to be, uh, how can they take the name like that it's got to be registered isn't it it's uh well it's a long story and i won't go into yeah. it <laughs> okay um, but uh but i would just say that um uh we we uh they 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 feel like they have some claim to it because uh one of them's father uh uh sang in the imperials and and w when we were with elvis as a matter of fact so mm -hmm. Uh, the father passed it down and gave it to him, mm -hmm. he said, and so uh, rather than in employ lawyers who really um, are waiting for people to call so they can make a bunch of money off of you, mm -hmm. uh, we just we just leave it alone. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I just, I, I've seen trademark um, lawsuits that lasted for years, mm -hmm. and nothing is ever resolved. The only ones who ever make a resolution of the, 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 the one in particular was never resolved. The only one who made any money was the lawyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just don't believe in paying these guys to uh, yeah. to keep to keep a lawsuit alive because they're working by the hour. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm very <laughs> I'm very hostile to uh, lawyers. Now, if somebody sues me, I may I might change my team. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blackman, I want to thank you very much for doing this for me. You're welcome. Okay. Right. Uh, you, you take care now. All right. Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye.